Good morning and welcome to today's Micro Moment Monday, where we're going to learn how to make our own steam canner. I'm so excited about this. You know, it was really quite fortuitous that this beautiful steam canner that I just recently bought had a, a defective um, gauge on top because it caused me to think, isn't that interesting? Our lives sometimes become so dependent on gadgets that think for us that we forget to think for ourselves. And I know that I am guilty of that because I love gadgets. In any case, the company has been wonderful to me. Um, they have sent me a completely new canner and this gauge works perfectly on the new canner. So I wanna go through exactly what a steam canner is and then I'm gonna show you how to make your own without, if you have happen to have the right size of a pot among your household kitchen pots, rather than having to purchase one. Steam canning and water bath canning follow the very same processing times. The only thing that differs is how the jars are heated. In water bath canning, the jars are completely submerged in a pot on a rack and the water comes up above the jars. Notice that this canner is plenty large enough for that to happen. Um, this rack that came with this canner does dual duty. It can be this way for regular water bath canning. For steam canning, things are just a little bit different. No part of the jar is submerged in water. And so you can turn this one upside down and put the water in below the rack and put the jars on top of the rack so that they are not touching the water and only surrounded by steam. So this is a great design and a great pot and I'm really glad I have it. But do you know what? I don't even pay any attention to this anymore and I'll tell you why I'm gonna set this aside. For those of us that have done water bath canning for many, many years, we did it without any kind of a measurement instrument to tell us that the water was boiling. Duh, we could just look in the pot, we could see the water boiling. And we knew that at that point in time with the jars submerged and when the water was boiling on top of those jars, that's when we started our processing time. And just a note, I've been a little concerned by some of our comments. We had a viewer say that she did all of her garden produce in a steam canner. Almost all garden produce is low acid. Peas, carrots, beans. Um, and so you don't ever, ever, ever steam can or water bath can anything except high acid foods, fruits mostly. So please be very careful and always follow tested recipes. So essentially what we have to do is have a pot with an elevated rack that we can then put jars on and water underneath so the jars don't come in contact with the water and only the steam. And then we have to eyeball it to see if the water is boiling and producing steam. Do we really need a gauge for that? Uh, I don't think so. It's nice to have a gauge because that's a crutch and we can always lean on a crutch if we need to, but we don't have to have it. And actually, as I was thinking about this, I had two people say, well, can't I use just a regular water bath canner for a steam canner? And the answer is maybe, but here's what you would need to do. This is the pot that I'm going to convert to a steam canner. If you have watched very many of our water bath canning videos, you have probably seen me using this very pot as a water bath canner. You do not need a special pot to do water bath canning or even steam canning if we understand the principles, which is what we're gonna talk about right now. You can use any pot, put a rack in the bottom, lift the jars up on top of the rack, cover the jars with two inches of water and do water bath canning. I've done it hundreds of times and it's very safe. I don't need to buy any kind of a special canner. This will hold four quarts. So why not elevate the rack in here and then put the jars on top with only enough water in the bottom? Can we visually see when the water boils, if the glass, if the top is glass, which it needs to be, 
Yes, we can see if the water is boiling. We don't need a gauge to tell us, oh, the water is boiling right now. When water boils, it produces steam. Steam fills the pot and comes out the edges, or in this case, it comes out these, this hole right here on this pot. So can we visually see the steam escaping from the pot? Yes, we can. And so it really doesn't matter what um, zone we are in with the little dial that comes up either in one or two or three green bands that are possible. We can tell when the water boils at our elevation. We don't even need to know at what temperature it is. When the water boils, we know it is boiling at our elevation, whatever that might be. So, and I have tested it with a thermometer so I know, but I don't need a thermometer and neither do you. If you can visually see water boiling and visually see steam, you are in business. So we're going to move to the overhead camera and I'm gonna put this together as a steam canner and we're gonna quickly put it through its paces. Oh, here's the pot. I'm removing the lid and I am putting in as this, the, the um, spacers, four ounce jars filled with water. And I'm just going to be putting them, you can see the spots on this pot where I practiced this to be sure that it would work. So I tried them empty, it doesn't work empty. It rattles, they rattle all over the place. Okay, so those are my spacers. And here is the rack that I'm going to use. Now, before I place anything in here, I'm going to put three quarts of water in the bottom. That is the same amount that is required by that professional canner. All right, that happens to come just to the top of those little four ounce jars. Now in goes the rack. And I can fit four quarts on the rack. Now these four quarts are filled with water for my test. They do not have to have a lid on them because I'm just running a test. Now I'm going to put the lid on We are going to bring the stove over and turn it on high. It is now on high. I'm going to lift the canner. This is very heavy. Okay, so we're going. Now we're going to see if we can tell when it starts to boil and when it starts to produce steam. So I will bring you back at that point. So I'm bringing you back. Um, it is now boiling. The lid has steamed up, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to tell. But if you look around the very edges, you can see that water boiling. Now, you would never, ever open the lid during an actual canning session. Um, I may open it just so that you can see better. I think I will do that, but don't do this during a real session. So you can see that steam is being produced and the water is boiling. You just have to look around the edges, but the water is boiling vigorously. It is on high and steam has started to escape. I just let most of it out. Steam is starting to escape from this edge of the pan and over here on this edge of the pan and it's pretty steady steam coming out. So now that the pot is boiling and it is producing steam, um, just how much steam do we need to see and what is it going to look like? Well, it will not look like what happens when you vent your stovetop canner with a whole big shoot of steam coming up. It's going to be producing steam because it's boiling. It's going to be filling the pot and it's going to be coming out. It's not going to be shooting out from the lid, but you will be able to see steam escaping. Some from this hole, some from the sides, and once you see that, that's when you want to start your 10 minutes of time, of, of wait time, before you actually start your processing time. 
All right, so it has been 10 minutes and we're now ready to start our timing. So I am confident that the boil is very strong, that the steam is, is being produced in the pot. So now I'm going to turn the heat down, but I will still keep the water at a good boiling rate. And then I will start the processing time right now. While this finishes processing, um, the other day I did a batch in the other canner for 20 minutes. The actual processing time was 10 minutes. Well, why did I process it for 10 minutes? Because if you are an experienced water bath canner, you know that elevation affects processing time. And I have now completed the um, water bath and steam canning checklist. So this info sheet is available right now up on our website, not the bookstore, the website. And I'll put the website address on the low part of the screen so you can go there and then just scroll to the very bottom. It's in the download section. Just download it. And on the second page, I provide you with what the standard time increases are according to your elevation. So at sea level, you don't need to make any adjustments. And most recipes, when they give the processing time, and don't tell, but they'll say, process for 10 minutes, adjust for altitude or elevation, depending on what it says in the cookbook. So the base is 10 minutes, and then you add on to that whatever it says for your elevation. 3,000 to 6,000, 10 minutes, and that's us, which is why I added 10 minutes to the processing time. All right, so we're going to then pretend that this has come to the end of it is its processing time. And this works just beautifully uh, because I can guarantee that inside that pot with the steam, the steam is the same temperature as the boiling water. And if I were to measure that, it would tell me exactly what the boiling point is at our elevation. But really the only reason you need to know your elevation is to add on the correct amount of time to the processing time. Don't worry about what the temperature of the water is. If it's boiling, it's boiling. If it's producing steam, that's all you need to know. So you can visually check that without any kind of a gadget to tell you, oh yes, it is now boiling. <clears throat> and if you give it that extra 10 minutes to really fill the inside with steam before you start your processing time, you don't need the three levels and a, a, a needle to move into one of those green zones for you. You can eyeball it and you can be 100% accurate. So. I'm going to turn this off. And at the end of um, water bath canning or steam canning, we remove the lid. And we just let it sit. So I cut the processing time for this mock batch short. But every single time in my testing of this method, um, when I took the measurements of the water in the jar. The water in the jar was always between 190 and 200 degrees, and it only needs to be 180 to kill E. coli, listeria, and salmonella. So doing your own version of a steam canner by following the instructions of elevating the jars above the water level so they are completely surrounded by steam works regardless of the pot that you use. This is my 16 quart stock pot. It is stainless steel. It is a home chef. And this is listed on our um, Amazon store if you wanted to go check that out. So I hope this has been useful for you. And thanks so much for joining us. And we will see you next Monday for another micro moment.